Doctor Who is officially back on our screens on the BBC here in the UK and Disney Plus internationally um, with the Star Beast. Uh, this is the first new episode since the end of the Jodie Whittaker era, and this is kind of the start of the 60th anniversary uh, special trilogy that we're getting um, before we get fully entrenched into Shuti Gatwa's interpretation of the Doctor, uh, which is of course number 15. Um, so in this video, this is my review, like I say, for The Star Beast, which was the episode that came out on Saturday night. Um, I watched the episode yesterday and I just have some thoughts on it that I thought would be fun to do a little review on. Um, as I am trying to branch out on this channel and do a few more different things, you know, just other areas of fandom that I'm personally interested in. So I thought, why not? Let's do a review for Doctor Who. So I do need to start this review off by clarifying my stance on Doctor Who and like what level of fan I am. Um, so this may be controversial, but... I actually only started watching Doctor Who uh, with the Jodie Whittaker era. So I am a very new fan to Doctor Who. I have not seen anything pre-Jodie Whittaker. I have literally seen Jodie's tenure and that is it. Um, and also now this first episode. I did watch a couple of episodes of Doctor Who when I was a kid growing up and stuff. Because it was always on, of course, um, here in the UK. But I personally was never... It was never a show I was particularly invested in. In fact, as a kid, it kind of scared me. Which is quite a common thing I think you'll find in the UK. Like, a lot of kids were scared by Doctor Who. Because it was kind of freaky in places. Um, but I am a very new fan. So in terms of, like, you know, my knowledge of Doctor Who lore and stuff like that. It's something I'm learning about and have been learning about in the last few years since starting watching the show, but I'm by no means an expert, you know. Unlike the Arrowverse, for example, which I know like the back of my hand, uh, in the case of Doctor Who and the Who universe, it's just not something I'm well versed in. So if I do get a couple of things wrong or something like that, please bear with me. Like I say, this is not something I claim to be well versed in. So um, this is just a fun series for me just to talk about this show that I'm really enjoying. So with this being the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who and this being the start of this kind of trilogy of specials that we're getting, um, the main big talking point, of course, going into these specials is the return of David Tennant as the Doctor. Um, David Tennant, probably, I would argue, the most popular and most well-known Doctor, uh, at least of the modern era. Um, he is beloved, of course, and while I've seen a couple of episodes of his in the past, like I say, when I was younger... I'm not particularly attached to his portrayal, but I do really love David Tennant as an actor, just everything he's in, um, particularly like his role in like Jessica Jones is phenomenal. I think he's one of the best like comic book villains we've ever seen adapted on screen. So I was excited to see his portrayal of the Doctor, like obviously I've heard things about it and stuff, and um, I have to say like David Tennant looks like in this episode, he's just like, he's getting back into an old pair of jeans, you know, he's just, he slips back into it so easily. Um, I have seen like some people complain that he plays this role exactly like how he played the 10th Doctor and this is technically the 14th Doctor um but for me personally like I just loved seeing him in the role because he was clearly having so much fun um just being back in this world and back in the costume back in the character and also he doesn't you know he's not phoning it in either he's also delivering a really powerful performance here he is really nailing it home about how much he just cares about this world and this character so I think David Tennant, like, yeah, maybe it might be, like, a slightly familiar performance to what people remember him. Like, people will very easily feel back at home with David Tennant in the in the Doctor role. I feel like that was the only way this was ever going to go, because if you think about it, if they had told David to do it completely differently and play the character completely differently to how he did previously, I think that would have done more harm than good, and I think it would have caused a lot of controversy in the fan base, which controversy is one thing this fan base really doesn't need right now. Um, so I feel like him playing it safe, for lack of a better word, um, was a smart choice. And he's still doing great work regardless. And the other big cast member returning is, of course, Catherine Tate as Donna Noble. Now, again, I have no connection to Donna Noble, really, so I'm kind of learning about her character and her story through this. Um, so there were a couple of, like, spots with her character that I was a bit unfamiliar with and struggled to follow, but I think generally, you know, I get the gist, you know, she took on sort of all the information and mind of a Time Lord uh, in order to save the day, and because of that, uh, if she remembers the Doctor and everything that happened, then obviously she, she will die. Um, now, Catherine Tate is just a wonderful actress like i i do love Catherine tate um you know growing up watching many of her comedy shows and just seeing her on like you know she does a lot of the channel 4 comedy shows here in the uk and stuff um so i love Catherine tate like she's really funny a delightful presence on screen and she's delightful here 
um you know the way she kind of plays it initially where she doesn't remember anything and then once she actually remembers her life she kind of kind of flips the performance 180 um it's great to see and i think what i really loved is seeing her and david tennant like they're clearly really good friends because they were just having a blast together like particularly that scene where they go into the tardis together for the first time and they are just like ecstatic um, you felt that energy radiate from them off screen to the audience. And I think that both Catherine and David did that so incredibly well. Um, so I really like Catherine Tate in this role. Again, I just love her anyway. Like, she's so great. Um, so these two coming back and as a pairing, like, I think it just works exponentially well. And this episode does have, like, a big supporting cast. There are a couple of characters who I believe, you know, longtime fans of the series will be familiar with. Um... But the big one I want to particularly point out is Yasmin Finney as Rose Temple Noble. Um, this is Donna's daughter. Um, now, I think that um, I'm not 100% sure of the pronouns of this person as they are trans. Um, but So I'm not going to presume any pronouns here. But they were, um, they were really good in the show. They were really, really good in the show. Um, I really enjoyed their performance, what they brought to it. And I thought that they were just a really nice addition to this cast and i think the rest of the supporting cast you know the rest of donna's family um also were really good um so i really enjoyed the supporting cast and i you know i'm looking forward to seeing more of them in the next couple of episodes now the main threat of this episode and the star beast in question is the meep now i'm sure many of you have seen even if you don't watch the show you've probably seen the meep floating like floating around over the last few days um it's this really adorable little creature design um and they end up being the main threat of the episode. Um, and I think that the Meep is just a really funny design. You know, I did put out a tweet where I compared it to my cat, which, you know, there are many things in pop culture that just remind me of my cat. Um, and the Meep is yet another one of those installments. Um, but the design of it is incredible. Like, the CGI is really, really good. There's also clearly a lot of practical effects that went into it as well. Um, so the combination of the two delivers a really real looking thing um also the meep is voiced by miriam margoyles who is just a wonderful uh voice actress and personality um again if you're from the uk you'll be familiar with miriam she's been in many many things she's also a famous comedic author as well um she's just delightful and um she does a really good job of bringing her kind of voice to the role um the kind of length she goes to with it is really fun um so yeah i loved i loved the meep i thought they were great and clearly they were trying to capitalize on the kind of like grogu baby yoda thing from the mandalorian like it is this kind of cutesy sort of design of a character um that then has this kind of evil twist um not that grogu has an evil twist but you know what i mean like they're going for like a cutesy kind of design it does kind of feel a bit like grogu in a sense it also looks a bit like a furby uh, so it's kind of like this weird mishmash of like these different cutesy designs from pop culture and media across the years but it, it does work really well um and i really liked the meep i just like I, i'm kind of sad that the meep will probably never be seen again at least for some time um i kind of wanted this character to like be in the next two episodes of these specials but i'm sure that you know the fact that this was a character that came from i believe the doctor who comics or the doctor who magazine from many many years ago um surely with the positive reaction they've had i'm sure they will bring the meep back at some point uh, maybe even at some point in shooty gatwa's ten uh, tenure and i spoke about it briefly when talking about the meep but the cgi and special effects in this episode are great like one thing i think the jodie whittaker tenure and the jodie whittaker era got particularly criticized for was the cgi and the special effects i think a lot of people felt like they were not up to scratch for you know the level of quality that we expect from the bbc um but i think that this episode really used its its budget really really well like i said the meep looked incredible all of the action scenes were um really well done with its spectacle you know you felt like the money was there on screen the only characters i felt like weren't the best were the um sort of the wrath warriors i think they were called um which are like the two kind of bug-like guys um i thought i felt like their designs looked a little bit foamy at times like almost like they were not quite real um which obviously they're not but you know what i mean uh they felt like they weren't fully there um but in general i think the cgi was was really good and really well done and this is definitely a step up from some of like the the weaker cgi entries of jodie whittaker's era for sure i do have a couple of negatives though for one i do feel like you know there's this plot point in the episode which we sort of mentioned earlier where the doctor cannot allow donna to remember him uh, or anything that came before 
you know, with their life together. Um, and that's all fine and dandy. And, you know, you have Donna's mum in this episode who does, you know, she's trying her best to protect Donna by not allowing her to see anything or learn of anything from her past. Um, but then you've got, like, the Doctor who obviously is aware of this and he is trying his best to protect her. But then at the same time, he's also just going around explaining stuff. And, like, he literally uses the sonic screwdriver straight in front of her. And, like, surely that's not something you would do. Like, I understand they are in, like, a situation of peril. So I kind of get it. But then at the same time, I feel like they could have done it in a more sneaky way. Because he's not, like, trying to hide the sonic and do stuff. He's literally just doing it right in front of her and explaining what it is. And it's like, surely if you needed, to, you know, if you needed to use the Sonic in that situation, you would kind of hide it under the jacket and sort of, you know, do it that way, rather than just like full on showing Donna the Sonic screwdriver and explaining what it is and what it does and what you're doing. Um, I feel like that was a bit sloppy. Um, and there were a couple of moments like that where I feel like the Doctor could have done a better job of like trying to protect Donna from remembering stuff, because it felt like at some points he was just being a bit nonchalant with the stuff he was doing. And the only other aspect of the episode that I didn't... It's not that I didn't like it, I just personally felt like I was in the dark on it. Um, and this is purely obviously my fault. Um, is the whole, like, Donna resolving her metacrisis situation. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of stated that Rose also has the same kind of abilities because it was passed down to her. Which, that I understood. Like, that makes sense, you know, biologically with her being, um, or they being Donna's daughter. Um that makes sense um that you know th they would also have these abilities but what i was unsure on was the binary non-binary thing um like i understand obviously the character of rose identifies as non-binary so there was a slight commentary on that um so i get that aspect of it um i just didn't get how it worked like scientifically like do you know what i mean like there was the whole thing of you know donna being binary and rose being non-binary um, you know, because Donna kept saying the word binary, but them two kind of combined together uh, meant that they could kind of share the metacrisis and share the kind of power of it so that neither of them suffer from the pain of it or, you know, so neither of them will die. So I guess it's a thing of like, with one being binary, one being non-binary, they balance each other out, I guess. Um, but again, I feel like this is just me being in the dark because I haven't seen you know, the Tenant era of Doctor Who. So I feel like if I had seen that and was more clued up on it, um, I would probably understand it a bit better. Um, but yeah, I was just a bit unsure about it. But if you do understand it in the comments, can you please let me know in the comments, like, what the explanation of it is? Because I just personally didn't fully get it. So I'd like to understand it. Um, so yeah, it's not really a complaint about the episode or how it was done. Um, I think it's probably more of a me thing. Um, so yeah, if you could just explain how the whole binary, non-binary thing works, if you get it, um, that'd be great. Because I would love to just understand it. Um, so I can be fully prepared going into the next episode, because I feel like it's probably going to be important going forward. Overall though, I thought that the Star Beast was a really good start to this kind of new era of Doctor Who. Obviously Russell T Davies coming back um, after taking a good few years out from Doctor Who to do some brilliant other projects. Um, he's come back here to deliver something really cool, really fun, really exciting, and kind of refreshing as well. This felt refreshing. This didn't feel like this did feel different from Jodie's tenure as the Doctor, and I liked that. Um, so I think that you know, if you're a fan of old Doctor Who, like from this era, um, you should definitely check this out. Like you will like it, I'm sure. Um, if you're a fan of the Jodie era, like me, I think this will feel different to you. But I think that like me you will kind of sink into it very quickly especially if you're especially if you're british because this feels like doctor who is such a quintessential british tv show and i feel like you will just sink into it instantly and as i did and you know i feel like if you're excited for the kind of new era of doctor who with russell t davies uh, coming back as the showrunner and with shooty gartwa coming in as, as 15 i feel like you should watch these because they're going to be pretty important and you're going to see like shooty's kind of beginnings here um so yeah the star beast was really good fun i enjoyed it i'm looking forward to the next episode i believe it's the second of december it's coming out so that's like next week or a couple of weeks um so i'll definitely do a review for that one when it comes out uh, but make sure you let me know your thoughts on the star beast in the comment section down below what did you think of it uh how do you feel about this you know new david tennant interpretation of doctor of the doctor and how do you feel about russell t davies coming back whatever you think let me know in the comments down below and if you want to see more doctor who reviews and more nerdy geeky comic booky content like this make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell and hope to see you guys again next time